Good morning, everybody. Welcome in. Happy Friday. It's April 23rd. My name is Matt, and uh, I am a sort of guest hosting, I guess you would say. Uh, what's up, Lori, James? Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. S I, I'm not, I'm just not going to try. Good morning. <laughs> Happy year, year. Jim's in the house. What's up, Shawnee? I love it. Sharissa, we've got awesome names in here. Stevan or Steven? Oof, I don't know. You guys are, uh, man, I get, I'm having a hard time with it. But Catherine, what's up? Lori, Rod, awesome. Chris, good to see you. Alicia, all right. Um, I got my coffee. Uh, so that's good. It's 7 a.m. where I'm at, 10 a.m. Eastern. We do these every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, if you don't already know, if you want a text message reminder, uh, we do little text message reminders. Let's see if I can be yep. up. There we go. Text WUL to 813-296-8553. You'll get a little text uh, every time we go live. Let's see. I got it right there. It just came in. And it gives you a little link where you can just join. It's super easy. Um, <clears throat> I'm moving. So um, I am in the most empty office. It actually sounds echoey. It's like, it's super weird, but I've got a couple boxes right here that say office shelves and uh, all of my stuff is in it. So we're moving um, kind of this weekend slash on Monday. So uh, anyway, welcome in. If you're newer to uh, Wake Up Legendary, awesome. We're happy to have you. And um, uh, yeah, we've got an awesome guest today. Typically on these, we have uh, guests lined up who are part of our community. Uh, every single Monday through Friday, we bring somebody on who's just crushing it and and doing super well. So uh, we've got an, another awesome guest today. His name is Brandon. We're going to bring him in in just a second. Um, <clears throat> we do have, as well, many of you ask for merch. Uh, we do have a new uh, merch line. Ooh, hold on. Oh, there we go. Right there. Uh, you can go to belegendary.shop and uh, grab some merch. Uh, we've got some new stuff that's never, we got some new drops that have never been seen before. So uh, grab yourself a little merch there. So, um, hey, in the, in the comments, uh, I'm going to bring on Brandon. If you guys can welcome Brandon and he's coming from Utah or he's, he's not coming from Utah. He's, he's joining us from Utah. Uh, give him, give him like a thumbs up or a heart, uh, on this stream. If you're here with us live and then, um, and then drop some, drop some like clapping emojis in the comments, uh, to welcome Brandon in, uh, Brandon, what's going on? Hey, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Going? It's going really so, well. So you're in Utah. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about you and what you do and just bring us into your world a little bit. Yeah, so uh, currently I, ha I do have a full time job, uh, good old corporate America, but uh, it's a it's a it's a good environment, and I'll get to that later. But cool, uh, I have two daughters, a six year old and a three year old, uh, married for ten years, and uh, yeah, life life is good, especially right now. Got new ventures that kicked off with joining the legendary team and getting that education. Um, so the doors are opening and a uh, new purpose is forming in my life and it's, it's, it's very exciting times. Yeah. Cool, so. man. That's awesome. I like it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what, tell us a little bit about your job. So, and, and just as a side note to everybody who's mm -hmm. here, uh, this industry, a lot of times I've been in this industry for a long time. They, um, <laughs> they kind of, I don't know how to say this they kind of shit on having a job. <laughs> like, <laughs> they, they make you feel like ashamed. Oh, you have one of those job things. Um, we don't really do that here. Uh, we, we kind of actually view it as like a positive thing. Like we view it as like, I shouldn't say we, I, and I know our leadership team here, like we tend to view that as like a healthy thing. Like, Hey, as you're getting started and figuring this whole thing out, like, Hey, keep some income coming in. Help yourself uh, stay sa stay stable. Um, I think what it allows is for people to to sort of stay out of a desperation mode. Like sometimes one of the biggest things that when people come and they want to start something online, they're like, you know, I don't have a job and I'm so desperate and I've got all this stuff. The first thing I tell them is like, you should maybe just get a job to start with. Like 
I need to make money in 30 days. No, you should just get a job to start with. Get some income coming in. Go drive for you know Grubhub or Uber Eats or something. And just get a little bit of income coming in. It helps like, because when you're in the desperate state, that's when you tend to do things that are stupid. And like, so anyway, I just wanted to say, you know, like I, we just have zero like negativity towards anything like that. And a lot of people, dude, like we've had people come into, sorry, I'm going on a little tangent here, but Fine. we've had people come into our community, make a million dollars, not joking, a million dollars. And, um, uh, like they have been, uh, and, and while they were making that, they were still working a full-time job, quit their full-time job were totally bored uh, came to one of our masterminds and he, he said, he literally said, he was like, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go back working for the air force. Like I'm, I'm bored. This sucks. I don't like it. I liked my job. And like, and we were just like, dude, totally. Like the point isn't that you quit a job or you get out of your job. The point is that you get to do what you want. So anyway, that's my rant for the day. Thank you for listening to my Ted talk, everybody. Um, so what do you do? I mean, what's, what's your job and how do you balance starting this new venture and also working a job and you've got two kids and how do you balance all of that stuff? Yeah. Well, first of all, just the back to the job perspective, uh, grateful to have a job is definitely theme is the theme of, uh, my life right now, especially after last year in the industry I'm in. So I'm in a, uh, I work for a sales and marketing company. Um, I work on the call center side, so I manage a team that, you know, answers phone calls and converts sales and, and upsells other products. So high, high attrition, you know, tons of different uh, personalities and which I which I love. Um, so the day to day is pretty, pretty structured. Um, and again, grateful, grateful to have a job. And yeah. um, in, in all honesty, the reason why I'm still at my job is the people I work with. They're incredible people. Um, if you're if you're not laughing at least a few times a day, then you're failing at something. And I get you know I laugh all day hanging out with the guys I work with and and the and the gals I work with are incredible people. So kind of the structure is you know the nine to five is the general Monday through Friday. Um, I try to get in. I try try is a big word here. Try to get in some work before before I start my my shift. And then when I'm done, I'll put in another hour or two just to keep keep momentum going. And that's kind of something that's really helped me go. Um, from point A to B is when you get momentum with with legendary and, and starting your business, you have to have a process in place that keeps you doing little things every day, no matter what. Even if it's 15 minutes, the fact that you have accomplished something is so crucial, and in, 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 in especially in my experience. So, yeah, busy life. My girls are getting the energy now, so it's it's really fun. Uh, they're friends and their enemies, you know, all that dad life that you get and i uh, grateful to have such a wonderful wife that, you know, handles all that <laughs> while well, I stay down in the basement in the office and do my thing and melt my eyes all day looking at computer screens and, and do my work. So, yeah, and, and, and all said and done, my job was that, you know, I commuted to my job down in, you know, a half hour away from where I live. And last year with COVID, we were able to move to work from home. So, you know, the last year has been the only time in my whole life that I've worked from home. Yeah. Um, at first, it was kind of cool. It was, you know, where PJs to work, all that stuff. Now it's all about I've got to structure my day to get outside and feel human without a phone in my hand or, or a computer in front of my face. So that's really the biggest balance for me is as long as I can get outside or get somewhere away from technology with my kids and just be present in the moment. That is the mental clarity that that has helped me, you know, bridge the gap between just the full time job and now a full time job with you know, very important commitments with legendary and in, in my affiliate business like growing and, and, you know, doing X, Y, and Z there. So. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. I like that part about, um, so I was doing some reading uh, like recently, just, I think it was a headline or something. Just, I'm always curious about habits and how those form and how long they take to form and stuff like that. And, um, a lot of times people say it takes, you know, three weeks or a month or something like that. But for some people it takes a lot longer and then, but the layer beneath sort of just 
the layer beneath sort of starting the habit is how long does it take to become automatic? And they mm -hmm. said on average, it was like two and a half months or something. <clears throat> so that's um, part of the reason like on Thursday business blueprints and different webinars and stuff that we'll do, I'll emphasize 90 days. Like I emphasize doing something consistent for 90 days. That's really hard to do. It is so easy to get distracted. It's so easy to sort of break from the habits. But if you, one thing that I've just constantly noticed here is on these shows in particular is that people typically come here, um, if they've been habitually sort of grinding and that's when results happen. Um, but you've had to be a little bit more structured. I see, I don't function like that. I function more of like, I'm, I'm more of a scattered sort of, I don't know. I'm a scattershot kind of guy and I, it has a lot of strengths. It has a lot of weaknesses. Uh, I have a lot of downsides that come from that, but I'm, I'm just more of a, I don't know. I like getting systems set in place, but what, once I get them set in place, I'm really good at them and I'm really good at making sure that everything just runs itself basically. But getting me to the point of like actually starting those systems and starting those habits is, I mean, it's like, it's like hurting a cat. It's basically what it's like to get my brain to do that. What, um, what, what have you found? Um, so we were talking a little bit beforehand about sort of belief in oneself, right? So like, I'm just curious why that's important to you. Tell us a little bit about, you know, that was the first thing that came to your mind, like before we went live, why is that? Or what, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, especially for us, you know, in this industry, um, helping others, and inspiring others to believe themselves to take action and start their own online business. I think that is the hardest part. I really do. I think it's easy to scroll through and get a business tip idea and then go to the website and kind of, you know, click bank and copy and paste, maybe make a Pinterest ad. You finally do that. But what is that? That's that's small step action. But do you believe in yourself? I, I don't know. You know, so that's kind of the the, the mystery or the, the passion that I have now is is finding out how to do that. And the easiest is how, you know, how I found belief in myself and belief in myself was just um, confidence to get uncomfortable. And, and that's something I'm grateful to have those experiences with my job. I'm always getting uncomfortable with new situations. So it's just kind of like these signs behind me, which that's why I have them. I stare at those all day. I beat those three things in my head. You have to execute. If you don't execute on anything, then you will never really have belief, right? Um, sometimes failure, because you know, sometimes failure comes before belief for those. And, and for me, that was definitely my story is I, I failed a lot um, in my past, you know, life. Uh, so and I'll touch on that. So my first career was a golf instructor. I was very passionate about the golf industry, taught golf for about 10 years, cool. kind of went up the ladder. Then, you know, baby came and reality set in as like, I don't have a financial fundamental income that is ready for this new life. And the belief went away, right? Cause it's like, I've been doing this for 10 years and now the belief of this is gone. What am I going to do? At the same time, I was fortunate to have kind of a, I was involved with a startup company um, with, it was kind of a coaching platform for, for uh, soccer moms and soccer dads, uh, recreational level soccer development. Um, so I was doing that. So I got, you know, started getting the taste of entrepreneur life, um, which again, belief was everything. Experienced kind of the shiny object syndrome with a business. Things didn't work out, failed at that really bad. Um, and then while that was happening, I had to find a new job. And that's, where, you know, the job that I'm at now, that's where it all started. Um, and, and to be here where it's like, okay, I've been in this spot for 10 years and now I'm in an, I don't know what I'm going to do the rest of my life position. That's where the belief really had to kick in. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a crazy time, but that's, that's, you know, looking back at those moments to where I'm at now, that is the emotion that most of these people go through when they're scrolling on TikTok or they're on YouTube, they're, they're thinking about what they dislike at their job. You know, they're dealing with the external stressors that we're dealing with right now in the world. And, you know, the past year, there's just a lot of external factors that are blocking people's simple belief of, hey, I can take action and actually do this. So that's where the passion of 
you know, us legendary marketers come in is we've got to bridge that gap. We've got to spark the interest saying, hey, you can do this. And yes, it doesn't take that much time. But if you don't believe in yourself, then you're just going to go in circles. And the more you go in circles, the more disbelief you create. So that's definitely why I'm so passionate about the belief side of things, um, especially getting going. So, yeah. Yeah. It is a big thing. It works itself out in different ways too. So like for me, the way that that worked itself out because I didn't have that, well, I carried a lot of shame, I think, um, from, from childhood and stuff like that. And that's a deeper issue, right? Uh, we don't have enough time to dive into all of that, but, um, and this isn't a therapy session, but, um, but it, it was sort of a, a level of like disbelief in self and, and it's, and, uh, Dave always says that, um, you know, success is uh, other way around. Self-esteem is the bedrock of success. Um, and, and that's another way of saying belief in oneself, right? It's sort of the, the self-esteem is the definition of having a belief in oneself. And, and that's, it's tricky how subtle that becomes. And I think when you break it down and you start to understand, like, for instance, once I started to understand that, I think I, I basically, I threw the word procrastination out of my vocabulary. I don't even use it anymore because if I, if there's ever this sort of procrastination thing, typically what it is, is it's me self-sabotaging. That's mm -hmm. what it really is. And that stems from like what you say is, is a, a lack of belief in myself, right? If I had the belief in myself, I would execute on it. And that's another word, uh, right? there. <laughs> my, my camera is mirrored, but, um, yeah. And so, and so, but that's the tricky piece. So with the whole execution, so for instance, let me, let me pull this up. I read this book a couple years ago, uh, actually a long time ago. I didn't realize how long ago I bought this book, but I'm going to share my screen here real quick. So when you said execute, I was like, oh man, that's, that's an interesting word. And this book right here called Execution. Have you heard of this book? I personally have not, but that's okay. that's spot on. So this is um, this is written by uh, Ra Larry Bossidy and Ram Sharan, and um, and it's it's a it's a good book. Um, they have uh, they're they're operational business type people. So they're all always focused on how, you know, you can have the biggest dreams that you want for your business. You can believe in yourself, whatever, but if you don't execute, right, it, it doesn't work. But here was the problem is I read this book and it was all about execution and it, and it told me all of the stuff that I needed to do to execute. But the reality was, um, that is like, that's, it's, the two go together sort of hand in hand, right? And uh, a belief in oneself is great and required to, to have that sort of success, but so is execution. And I'm not really sure that either one is, is like comes first or comes second or whatever. I'm not really sure either one comes, you know, before the other, they sort of both need to coexist. Like, um, like Dave always says, you can't, you can't think your way into a new way of acting. You have to act your way into a new way of thinking. So, and I think it's just, it's so enmeshed. I mean, they're just, they're so intertwined. They're so interlocked that how you act and the things that you do and the things that you say and your subtle gestures speak to your self-belief, right? You're, you're like, one thing I think a lot about is um, like, like when I wake up in the morning and I'm, and I'm, if I'm like sighing a lot, like oh, another day, here we go. Right. These little subtle things that we do, they sort of speak into our existence. They speak into, um, Oh, you know, it's life is tough, man. Life is tough. Or there was a construction guy that I was working that was doing some projects and stuff recently. And, and he would, here's the phrase he always said, he said, it's always something. You know, something goes wrong and he, here's what he says. It's always something. Yeah. See, God, yeah, it's always something. And I, and what, and so finally he, he had said this about 50 times and I finally was just like, yeah, but, um, you know, you ever wonder if, if maybe when you're working on a project or you're doing something on a project and you mess something up, 
you know, are, are you creating this pattern where you mess something up on the job and then you got to go back and fix it so that you can keep telling yourself it's always something, it's always something. And that's, it, this happens all the time online. I, I get emails all the time from people who are like, it's always something. Oh, geez, I got this working and now my ads account shut down and oh, I got this working and then this happens and oh my gosh, now this, right? And it's, it's just, I can't get through anything. And then like today, we've got you on here. Yesterday, we had Marissa who, you know, she's had multiple TikTok accounts shut up, shut down. And she's like, yeah, I don't know. It's just part of the game. Like next, thank you. It's like Ariana Grande. Thank you next, right? Just next account. Here we go, right? And she's just learning and plowing through snow while other people are stuck and their wheels are spinning. But it's the same, pla you know, we're on the same playing field. Everybody's new. It's just fascinating to me. That's all. I, I just am so fascinated by the inter the interweaving execution piece with this the level of self belief. And when those combine, it is. I mean, it's crazy what's possible. Like yeah. people don't have any clue what's possible when those two things are combined. And I think that's like a testament to to you know people like you who are in our community and our community in general. Like when you get around a lot of different people like this, or you get people on the wake up show like you who are executing and going hard after it. And also in the trenches about the whole level of self-belief thing, it's really powerful. So, uh, again, got a, on a little tangent there, but You're this good. is something that, I mean, I spent two and a half, three years in therapy, like working through this stuff, really deep stuff. And I was, you know, procrastinating and delaying and, you know, doing all this stuff um, to, to not work on my business. I spent a lot of time building my website and building my funnel, but never really actually like freaking going. Once I started to get into therapy and work through that self-belief shit, then it really got going. Things really started to move. I was like, okay, I got to start. I need to get uncomfortable fast. And that's when, that's when all the magic started happening. Um, so anyway, yeah, I love that. I love that. So how does that actually work out for you? So like, let's take that level of self-belief and, and the execution in theory. Like, what does that mean in practice for you? Well, for me, it's just like these signs say, I've, I've got to, I've got to keep doing something right. So for me right now, I'm, I'm getting into the YouTube tutorials cause we got to have some YouTube tutorials. It's, it's the circle of life with getting exposure and and really just yep. providing different platforms for different, you know, not everybody goes to TikTok. So a lot of people go to Pinterest. Well, we've got to have a some set up for them. A lot of people just are stuck on YouTube. Well, they've got to have something as well. Um, so, so it just starts, it's just a process really. As long as you have a process, um, the next thing is, is the hardest part and that's you're going to fail. And, it, and if you, like you just described, if you don't know how to take on failure, then you're going to get subconsciously screwed up in your head and stuck. Mm. Uh, if you can look at failure as, okay, I failed, take a step back, find out why you failed, create the clarity on that, then now you know what not to do, document that, eliminate that from your process, and then you can create you know, new failures that will bridge the gap to get you to success. So really that's that's kind of what it is. Um, that's why, you know, I know I'm gonna talk about these signs a lot, but these signs are, sum up everything in my life right now. As long as I'm executing on something and as long as I'm not, not that I want to fail, but when I fail, as long as I know that I put the work in to know why I failed, create the clarity around that and then restructure the process to get to these goals and the belief never goes away. The belief stays strong and, and the process doesn't break and the habits don't break. So that's kind of where I'm catching momentum now. Um, and I'm, and I'm not going to sit here and say I've just been flawless with this whole time. So I'm going to go back to the start of my journey with Legendary. So back in about October is when I committed to the 15-day. Um, signed up, got through about day two or three. Got a new, I wouldn't say a promotion, but I got shifted to another role. of uh, okay. an insurance brand. So, you know, so I dealt with all that. Um, job security, you know, all these good conversations are there because at that time last year it was, you know, everyone, everyone was thinking about, you know, getting laid off and we're moving everything offshore. So we're going to lose jobs. So the stress of that was there. So anything that was asked was like, yeah, I'll do that. And sure enough, this new gig was 60 plus hours a week. So I had no time to do legendary. So yes, 
the excuses were there. I, you know, I'm human. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll get I'll get this 15 day start in November. I just need to get this going. And then November came. I'll I'll get going in December. Well, December came, and then January is like, nope. Still have a job. It's not going anywhere for a while. I'm not gonna ride the wave of. I need to worry about my job, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I'm committing to this and, and restructuring my, my day to day. Um, and then committed to the 15 day, finally completed it in January. And, and here I am now, and it's, it's been the best decision I've ever made. And, and now it's now, it, it, just like I said, what were my failures at that time? Well, time management, both at my job and outside were probably a big factor on why I prevented, you know, getting started in October, November, December. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, looking back on my journals or just my experiences, trying to find a way to create content and, you know, conversation and, you know, tutorials or whatever it is, TikToks that kind of explain that to help others that might be in a similar situation break through that gap of disbelief or they feel stuck. Kind of the same emotion I did. It's like, well, if I do this, then I'm probably going to lose my job if they find out. And sure enough, I mean, that's that's a, that's exactly what I'm doing. So instead of being fearful of taking on a new, you know, starting your own business and being scared that your job's going to find out and you're going to get let go or something, it was more of a, no, I put in my work and my job, I can do what I want in my personal life and, and my job will accept that. And, and that's the way you got to look at it. And, and, and I don't know if there's many out there that have that same thought process. They're, they're, you know, they're in a good spot with their job and they're scared to take on this venture because of the fear their job's going to find out and they're going to get let go. Um, I think there's more myth to that than, than actuality, but it's, it's more of the mindset shift of not being fearful. It's more of, no, this is my life. And I put my, I, I give a hundred percent of my job. So they don't need to worry about what I do after work. I'm, I'm not, you know, I can play video games or I can start an online business is the same thing. So once I had that mindset shift, which was, you know, just late December, January, then it was full throttle with, with legendary and getting an affiliate business going. So that's it's a really cool experience. Really cool experience for me. Had you, had you done any, like, was this totally new? Was this like, hey, hold on one second. I just so everyone, I'm going to pull up this comment. Just, uh, hey, Richard, we are actually live, just so you know. Um, and yes, Lori, just, you can watch this later. You can go to legendarymarketer.com slash live. Uh, these are very, very real and live. It is Friday, April 23rd. We are live at 7 33 AM just so everybody's aware, but you can always watch these as a recording at legendarymarketer.com slash live. You'll see all of the replays, but we do these. We actually sit our asses down at 10 a.m. Eastern every single morning and do these live. I don't know that you'll ever find another company online who, who sells digital education who does this because they're all usually super lazy and they, uh, <laughs> they would never commit to doing something like this. Uh, so anyway, um, I, I wanted to know, I wanted to jump back though uh is this newer for you is this brand new was this like my curiosity is like had you ever purchased something online before that was like a digital education product that you were like i'm gonna buy this and i'm gonna learn how to um like like i'm gonna learn a skill online had you ever bought anything like that or done that before mm -mm. no nope. never and no no so kind of to tie to bridge the gap, my experience. So back in 2013, I partnered with you know my my childhood soccer trainer. He had a good a good reputation. Well, at the time, uh, not a business partner reputation, but anyways, that was when we formed this soccer company. So, you know, I got to kind of jump back into you know my childhood passion. You know, so so I learned how to do some video editing. I learned some basic digital marketing at that time, but not marketing like I know now. It was more just it was more just content creation was the marketing piece. It wasn't, you know, hashtags and, you know, SEO or anything like that. So that that's really the only self-taught online platform education content creation that I've ever experienced was just through that soccer company. So basically I'd film, you know, some Real Salt Lake players or some professional soccer players at the time do, you know, do skills and tutorial videos. And then I would edit them, make them slow motion for, you know, breaking each thing down mm -hmm. and then, filming kids do practice drills. So then the soccer mom can, you know, pull it up and say, okay, this is how I do the soccer drill setup. So that was what I was, so that was what I self-taught just outside of 
my career path in the golf industry and now um, being in sales. But no, affiliate marketing was kind of, it was new. You know, obviously I started seeing it popping up on, you know, TikTok videos or YouTube and um, just kind of I, the, the grasp of, you know, selling someone else's product and not dealing with customers or anything like that. It was subconsciously there, but I never committed to learning about it until uh, October when I saw a TikTok, probably, um, you know, Brian Brewer, definitely. I remember him at the beginning or um, I think AJ Rance was, was one that popped up in the original. But anyways, then I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. I want to, I want to learn more about it. And then that led me to legendary and that's where it all started. So I love it. I love it. It's super cool. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of good guys on TikTok and gals. Um, yeah. It's awesome. Um, so with, with the whole, like, all right. So October purchase, you're going through it. You take it serious in January. You're, you're starting a TikTok channel and all this kind of stuff. What I'm just curious is long-term vision the way that I, so I experience people differently on these shows and my experience of you seems to be sort of a, um, it's, I just get the, and I'm not trying to like put this on you or anything, but I just get the feel that you would be a really good coach to people. Um, mm -hmm. and I think like, you know, getting, getting good coaching or getting somebody who's a good coach can really help elevate like somebody's experience or somebody's, um, anyway, I, I, have you ever thought about that, especially around the self-esteem piece and the execute failure success? Like you're very sort of locked in. And I think sometimes people, when they're first getting started, don't realize like what people pay to have that kind of thing, right? Even just me with therapy, but this therapy isn't coaching, but it's kind of similar. Like the end goal is similar. It's just a different thing. Like when I got started in therapy, I was getting paid minimum wage, uh, almost minimum wage. Uh, as a barista at a coffee shop and my wife was, uh, in, in grad school and was not bringing in very much income. I don't think she was actually working at all. And, uh, I mean, we were just super broke, dude, like crazy broke paid rent and had like $7 in our bank account for, I mean, I'm talking like years and thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars in debt, um, specifically consumer debt, which is the worst kind of debt. Yes. Um, but, uh, but so when we were in that time, the interesting piece to, to all of that is, um, uh, when, when we were in that moment, I decided to go to therapy because it was one, I was, uh, my marriage was getting just, it was ter like my marriage wasn't terrible. I was terrible in my marriage, mm -hmm. but we were, we were strong. Like it was a struggle. Uh, two, like I wanted to break through in sort of the business online world. And I knew, uh, like I actually told my wife one day, uh, I said, I'm not going to make a dime online until I, I break through the internal barriers that I've got going on. Like, and it was actually true. It never happened until there was a day where I had $0 in our bank account and I got paid out a high ticket commission for a travel product I was promoting, which is over $3,000 as a commission to me. Uh, and I still remember that day I took a screenshot. And, uh, but before all of that happened, I spent two and a half, almost three years in very, very deep, intense therapy, psychodynamic therapy, not like screwing around like, Oh, let's think, you know, unicorns and rainbows. It's, it was like deep shit. And I went deep into debt uh, to do that. It hurt. Like it hurt our bank account. It hurt. And, uh, there was a day long down the road. Uh, there's a good, actually my therapist said this, uh, I went back and visited him six years later and told him where I'm at in life and how life is going. And he said to me the the therapist, he said to me, um, he said, you know, I, I know at the time that it was a struggle financially to do that, right? And every, every therapist or every coach or everybody who, who sells something like that is always nervous or a little worried about that. Um, they, they sort of are like, man, I don't, is this, you know, morally, is this great? Is this okay? You know, whatever. But he has a belief and here's his belief. He says, therapy and you could insert coaching therapy pays in dividends 
just like the stock, he didn't say just like the stock market or just like, you know, real estate or something like that. But in it, uh, paying for therapy or paying for coaching isn't like a one-time transaction payoff. It's a it's an investment where you're investing deep into yourself, and it pays off years down the road. Um, I could keep going to therapy. Maybe I should. Uh, it it always helps. Like it 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 always always helps. Um, I just haven't felt like I really needed it for a, for a little while, but I'm sure there's a day where I'll go back, um, because I'm the type of person who's always stretching myself. But I thought that that phrase was really fascinating. Therapy insert coaching pays off in dividends and the investment that comes from that, whether it's in coaching or whether it's in consulting or whatever it is is just always so fascinating to me. And I've seen it in my life and being able to go back to a therapist and be like, Hey, remember when, remember when I used to come in here and be like, dude, I have zero money. And like, I got to put, I got to put my therapy on a new credit card this week. <laughs> like I can't afford this dude. And, but I kept showing up and I kept showing up and he's probably thinking, God, this guy's going to go bankrupt coming <laughs> here talking to me for an hour every week. And and lo and behold, I had a day, right? Years down the road, years down the road, five years down the road or something. Uh, I had a day where I just paid off all of that debt at once. And for those years, it was a struggle. And, you know, the financial stress puts relational stress and all of this other bullshit on top of all of it. Trust me, guys, if you're there, if you're watching this, I've been there. I have fully been there probably in a worse place where you are filling the gas tank half full or a quarter full on the car in the car or standing in the checkout line, uh, for, you know, at, at the grocery store and hoping that I've got enough on our credit card to like actually pay at the time. I didn't realize how insane that was, but it was insane and it sucked. But just having that moment of realization that like, Hey, that thing paid off dividends and it still is to this day is a very cool feeling. And, um, again, another Ted talk, but, um, <laughs> I just, I get the sense from you, like, not that you're a therapist, but I get the sense from you that you're very intuitive about that process and it feels real. My experience of you is that, you know, you're dealing with that and your experience of that feels real to me. So, I don't know. Have you ever considered that down the road or like? Well, I do it daily. I mean, that's my job. So there's the ir irony there. So I, I have experience being in these situations, you know. So, you know, when oh, I yeah. started the job I'm currently at, it was I was on the phones, answering phones, selling. And then I got promoted to a sales coach. So I had my own team. So once that transition happened, it's OK. Now I'm responsible for their actions and not so much their outcomes, but. I need to create and show them again, they need to believe themselves. They need to have a process in place and they need to execute on X, Y, and Z that creates that success. That creates that, that repetitive because it's a repetitive job, that repetitive success. Um, so that's, that's the easy button version. The reality is, is everybody has their own struggles in their life and everybody mm -hmm. has their doubts and everybody has their chaos that they are dealing with in their personal life. And they come to work, and now they've got to perform as a salesman on the phones and et cetera. So yeah, I, I ironically have a lot of experience doing that. And then the next level where I'm at now is now I'm t creating leaders. I'm teaching leaders or sales coaches to do those things. Um, so the, the term that I, that I was grateful to learn, we had a gentleman come in and teach us weekly for about a year. He taught servant leadership, just everything around it. So, you know, a lot of the knowledge in, 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 you know, what I'm speaking to is are from those experiences and those lessons learned. Uh, so to, to circle back, you know, servant leadership is really something I'm passionate about because of my experiences, mentors that have got me through X, Y, and Z. Um, and, you know, just how gra how much gratitude I have for those people. Um, what a, what an easy way to be passionate to do the same for others, right? Like how, how fun it is to help someone deal with, you know, and, and not saying I'm a, I'm a psychologist, but, you know, hundreds of agents, I've dealt with hundreds of agents, I've dealt with, you know, 20, 30 coaches over the past couple of years, 
a different story for everybody, a different struggle. And it all comes down to the same thing. It's just identifying what's failing, what what's working and what's not working, getting that clarity so you can take those baby steps and take that action to go the other direction the best you can. Um, and when you start doing that or when you help others do that, then they have that new reset, uh, you know, new mindset, really. They have that new uh, charisma. They have the new motivation, you know, all those things that come with it. Um, and then, and then the secret is, okay, how do you keep doing that? And, and that's something that's, that I'm, you know, I've been pretty passionate about as well through my experience. Um, so, yeah, I mean, to answer your question a minute ago, you know, where do I see myself long-term? Well, if I were to, if I could snap my finger now, I would have, so, so as you know, my, my TikTok is Elevate Freedom. That's kind of the, that's kind of my, my business name at, at the moment. And it's probably going to stick because the reason why I chose Elevate Freedom was, you know, once I started learning about the niches and, um, you know, what's what's popular and what are people most attracted to? Well, obviously, finance, personal well-being and, you know, health or relationships, you know, all those kind of tie together. So elevate freedom is something that can cater to all of those. So, like I said, if I were to snap my finger, I would love to have a place where someone can go that want to elevate themselves in a physical or fitness way or or a relationship way or financial way because those are just those are the core i feel like the core three things that bring out a struggle in someone's life um in in religion of course is in there too but you know religion's a different a different uh path but i feel like you know having something where Anybody that fits those three or struggling with any of those three things, that's a pretty powerful business. So that would be my way of my magic wand and voila, that would be the business that I would like to, to have right now. So is that going to happen? No, but but baby steps could get there long term. So, yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell for, for I if I were to just snap my finger and have what I envision being something that I would be very passionate about. Um, it would be it would be a platform or a website or, or a business, whatever you want to call it, where, yeah, those that are struggling with health and well-being, they have a solution there. Those that are struggling with relationships or just basic self-esteem or belief in themselves, there's a pathway there and then financial pathway there. So I'm on the fin financial side right now um, because that's been an impactful part of my life. Learning how to make multiple streams of income is a very powerful experience and and helping others believe in themselves to do that and be empowered to do that is is really fun. It, it is. It, re it really is fun. And I know that those that are listening, it's really cool when you get that email of, hey, thanks for sticking it out with me. Now I'm making money or whatever it is. Like those, that's the best part of this whole experience. It's not it's not clicking and seeing how much commission you made or whatever. That's that's the cherry on top. But the experience of helping others because I got that experience myself and now I'm passing it on and helping others. It's, it really just, it eliminates all the crazy chaos that's going on in the world for me. Um, and it just kind of narrows down a, a more meaningful life to where just being present in the moment, you know, doing my work when I'm done with work, I'm working on this to help others do the same. And then it's family time and, and that I'm grateful to have it. It's, it's not easy, but you know, it's it's easy to say that that's what I have, but there's plenty of struggles. Don't don't get me wrong. Plenty of struggles in that equation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, of course there is. We're humans. <laughs> no, I like it, man. I like that. That's cool. And it and it is really cool uh, for me to see that your sort of skill sets and skills that you've built uh, and the talents that you have. It, I it just I, I think that everybody here would agree too. That everybody who's watching would agree that there's just a sense that you're uh, sort of just like it. Just seems like you're right in the midst of discovering where all of these kind of things are are going to come together, and your intuition and your talent is sort of meeting the skills that you've built. That's a really cool place to be too, right? Like you've got some people in the NFL who are. Or, or any sport or whatever who are super talented, but then haven't built the skills. Right. So like, like a wide receiver, do you watch football at all? I'm not, I'm, I'm a, I'm kind of a weirdo and that's, okay. I like, I, well, I used to like golf. I'm a tiger fan. Tiger's okay. oh, playing. It's kind of boring, but I grew up perfect. playing soccer. So soccer is my go-to soccer. Oh, well, let's, my go go to, let's, let's go to golf. Hockey, golf's golf's a second. great one. Golf's a great one. Right. Um, so for instance, right, like tiger woods or, uh, 
uh, g- great golfer. Um, like Rory McIlroy mm-hmm. or, um, or like, uh, uh, like a John Rom or somebody like that, who's super talented. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you've got people who are super talented, uh, but also combine the, the, the grind, right? So like tiger, there's stories about how tiger would uh, like his alarm clock hits and it's immediate out of bed. Like it is, it is a habit. I don't know. It's super early, like four or 5 AM or something. His alarm goes off immediate out of bed, no snoozing. Right. And it's straight to his grind. Same thing with one really interesting thing was Bryson DeChambeau over the last year or two started taking like six or seven or some crazy amount of protein shakes every day. He, he got super deep into the science of how he could, um, of how he could drive the ball further and straight and out drive everybody and basically hack the golf course. So he took all of his talent and then combined it with this intense sort of, um, just meticulous skill of, of attention to detail. I just like, I get the sense that like, that's right where you're at. And it's super cool to see, like to see that combination of you've got this talent that's clear. It seems like a relational talent, but it's also not just like sort of, um, unbounded or sort of wild and, and, you know, kind of flowing all over the place. You've really like honed in a skill set too by grinding in the sales role. Uh, when you grind in that sales role, you really build a lot of skills and you become super relatable to the people that you're coaching because then when you're actually coaching them, you've actually done it and you've built the skill set, and that's really clear makes you a better coach, makes you a better mentor, makes you be, you know, better everything. Um, that's the only reason that I can help people online is because of the hours of struggle and all of the growth I had to learn. So I just wanted to say that's very cool um, that you did that and that you're doing that. And it's very fun to watch. Like it's an awesome process to watch. I've got a freaking <laughs> fire engine right outside my window right now. This is why we're moving. Cause we live in this like little condo thing, like right <laughs> on one of the loudest intersections in Phoenix. It's so aggressive, but, uh, anyway, no, I just, I, I like when people's talent meets a skill and I just feel like honored to even just witness it seriously. Like I just, I, it's such a fun thing for me to watch somebody and that our program played some role in that for you is just super cool. So, um, it's, that's literally what we live for. It's just like when that sort of intersection all collides and happens and people are making breakthroughs and taking their, their sort of real world, you know, stuff and throwing it into the mix of, of their online business is just a very cool thing. So, um, man, thanks for coming on. Hey, do you have any, I'll let you have the final word. Do you have any final words to people? Maybe they're just getting started with legendary. Maybe they haven't purchased something from legendary. Um, or maybe they're just sort of, it doesn't even have to be about legendary. Just, you know, they're just starting out their journey online. Um, what would you say to them? Um, I just, I think that what's coming out of my mouth right now is if you feel stuck about anything, um, this, these are the things that have worked for me. Um, so take it for what it's worth. And again, knowledge is power. So there's many different perspectives, but for me, it's, Anytime I'm in a rut or stuck, the first thing I got to do is figure out, you know, I got to, I got to be grateful. I got to just be grateful for what's in my life. I need to have that thought process and I need to have that exercise, writing it down, whatever it is. And then once I, once I've kind of been experiencing the gratitude, then it's, you know, resetting clarity. What do I really want? Um, What, again, like I've said a few times, what isn't working right now? You've got to, this is the I think this is one of the hardest things being a human is when you look yourself in the mirror and you tell yourself what is not working, whether you want to hear it or not, you have to be able to do that. And if not, that's where mentorship or books or, you know, finding something that allows that to click. Um, so in comparison to golf, golf instruction, if there's 10 different ways to teach every aspect of golf. So if I'm giving you a lesson and I teach you this one way to do one thing and it doesn't work, well, I'm going to teach you a different perspective of the same thing that's going to get that. And I'm going to keep doing different perspectives until it clicks. So back to just the belief factor and, and clarity, you, 
and holding yourself accountable. If what you're doing again is not working, don't assume that you've put in the work and, and you can check the box. Well, I, I held myself accountable and I'm still stuck. So I guess that's what it is. It's like, no, no, no. You just haven't found the clarity yet. You got to, you got to look at a different perspective. Um, and I think just being in, you know, being stuck or just having doubts, those are, those are the two things that have been the biggest game changer for me is you just got to just sit down, just be grateful for what, what's in front of you. And sometimes there's not a lot. If you're really, you know, if you're rock bottom or whatever it is, you still got to just be grateful to be alive. Um, grateful for your health, just anything to get the wheel spinning with gratitude. And then once you have that, then it's, it's, you got to look yourself in the mirror and you got to, this isn't working and you got to be able to, to handle that and accept that. Um, otherwise, yeah, you're just going to play mind games with yourself um, and you'll, you'll stay stuck. So that would be my final, <laughs> my final uh, advice or perspective that is, that is done so well for me is, is just those two things. Be grateful. Once you're grateful and you've been through that, then it's okay. If, if, if I am stuck, then it's what, why? And, and going through that exercise of identifying and then holding yourself accountable. If you wanted to get in shape two months in, you're not in shape. You've got to put yourself as the blame. Um, and if you can't do that, then you're just going to subconsciously play mind games with yourself and stay stuck. And that's, it's a dangerous place to be. I've been there. You know, I've again, I'm fortunate and grateful to have a job where I experience people doing that over and over and I get to, you know, find the right perspective that clicks with them to get them to snap out of it. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> You're mute. Oh, sorry. There it is. Sorry, You're good. Uh, I was just saying, I, I just, I really like the, the, that ending part about the perspective change. Like that's such a big thing, man. It's such a huge thing to have people in your life who can shift your perspective. Uh, when, when stuff is hard or when you're overwhelmed or you're feeling stuck, like you said, it's very cool. So, uh, thanks Brandon. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for coming Appreciate on, it. dude. Yeah. It was really nice meeting you. Yeah. Good luck with the move. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you. Thanks. Yeah, I've got this. I got this. Is what he's referencing. I've got this <laughs> empty. Uh, we're move. It's moving day or close to. So thanks again, Brandon, for coming on. Uh, for everybody who's here, we go live every Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. It's actually live. It's actually uh, in real time. Today we went for an hour. Some days we go for. 30 minutes. We're also on podcasts. If you look us up on, oh, if you look us up on Spotify, uh, you can just search wake up legendary. You can see it on Apple podcasts on Spotify, whatever Spotify is usually the quickest to get uploaded. Um, so yeah, look us up. If you like to listen, as opposed to doing that, absolutely do that. So, um, thanks again for everybody who came in and, uh, attended. Hopefully, Next time I'm on this freaking thing, I got my boxes unpacked and I'll be in my new home office. So we'll see what it's like. Uh, it's always an interesting work from home situation. So, all right, take it easy. Have a good weekend. It's a feel good Friday. So make it a feel good Friday and uh, we'll see you.